Can we talk about the fashion? Yeah, uh, yeah. absolutely. It was oh, so yes. good. Like, seriously, one of the best fashions I've seen in a movie in a long time. Nice. How did that shape each of your characters? Well, I had incredible suits that were all um, from the eye and the, the vision of Guy Ritchie, our director. He loves fashion. Yeah. He could go and rub your scarf and tell you exactly what thread it was, what thread count, where it was from, yeah. blah, 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 blah. and I mean, <laughs> it's, it's hilarious, but it's quite impressive. And he's got a um, very discerning eye about fashion, and so I just took his lead mm. on that and had a good time. Yeah, he also dresses really well for, mm -hmm. on set. I mean, he's I've sharp. never seen a director mm -hmm. dress that sharp <laughs> on a set before. But yeah, the costumes were, were fantastic, and I loved, I mean, I absolutely loved my wardrobe. I wanted to take it home with me. Well, it's amazing how much um, inspiration you take from your wardrobe because throughout the entire pre-production, Dry Eyes was sort of in double-breasted suits and, and really kind of elevating himself or trying to elevate himself to kind of boss level. And then I turn up on the first day of set um, for myself and the uh, guy's like, nah, 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 gotta change that back into the wardrobe and come out with something completely different. And so for me, thinking like, oh, maybe dry eyes sort of gets power in suits, you know, it can, becomes like an, uh, an armor for some people. So I had to find a way of switching my character as quickly as possible before, before we started rolling. I love that. Um, speaking of Guy, I mean, I've seen you all before and you're all amazing actors, but you're so cool in this. Talk about stepping into this world because it's just like an extra, like, Richie, cool factor, like you seem edgier, just like more swaggy. It's just like you guys just seem way cooler mm -hmm. in this movie. <laughs> we definitely uh, are. <laughs> talk about stepping into his world and like working with him. This was the type of world that I wanted to step in with Guy Ritchie directing, Lock, Stock, and, and Snatch, and, and this all seemed to be have a, have a sisterhood or a brotherhood as yeah. far as what they felt like and smelled like and looked like on the page. Um, yeah, it is. I mean, everyone, every character has their own full identity and what they want. You know, you can pull any character out of here, out of this film, and say, I'm going to do a narrative based on their character alone. They're going to be the star of their own show. And That's you can so tell eight different stories. Um, so you don't always fight. In, in this world, guys always got characters that are, have a really clear identity of who they are. And I think that's part of what each one has a certain security and you know all of them can't last you know not everyone's going to make it and so you the fun is getting to wonder who's not going to make it and how and why mm. but everyone thinks they're going to make everyone thinks they're going to be king of the jungle but you know that's impossible in this movie you're an amazing business person you're a real business person in life um talk about what did you learn versus what you take in character wise from a business standpoint. Yeah, from a business standpoint, this is the one thing that, that and, and Guy and I worked on this on the set, is like, as soon as Mickey wants to sell his empire, um, and he's got two people that want it. Dry Eye. Yeah, he wants it bad. And then the uh, Matthew, the uh, uh, Jeremy Strong character. I remember going there very quickly, because originally in the script, I, did, I never suspected Matthew. I was like, if mm -hmm. you're going to sell your empire and all of a sudden somebody goes and sabotages part of it, they're trying to devalue it. So I need to look at anyone who's wanting to acquire it as a possible suspect um, and to keep, keep, my eyes on, so keep my eyes on both him and the Matthew part because that's, that's just a good business lesson. If you're going to sell anything and something goes wrong with it, if you're going to sell hot air balloons and all of a sudden your hot air balloons start, start leaking air, you go to who wants to buy it because they're trying to devalue your, 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 your enterprise. Facts. Well, I just learned something as well. <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys. It was so much fun. I imagine you guys got to spend a lot of time with each other. Tell me a surprising fact about one another while, that you learned while filming this project. Shu is not quite... Uh, the cunt that I thought he would be. Oh. <laughs> and Joker, we just thought we would try to get cunt into this interview, and so I just seized upon the opportunity right off the bat. I don't know if that's appropriate for your audience or not, but, you know, um, for, if you had to beat me out, I said, see you next Tuesday. Um, it was delightful. It was a delightful four days we spent together. And uh, I, uh, I don't know what I learned about Hugh, other than he's a, a tremendously fun fellow to spend four days with. The dirt on 
Charlie Hunnam. I don't know where to begin. Tremendous pothead for many years, but now no longer, correct? True story. True story. Um, Keep going. Doesn't drink anymore except at Christmas. Yeah. The one, the one week sabbatical from sobriety, and I, I take advantage. Writes scripts which get sold. <laughs> but not made. Well, but they, they will. Yeah. It's pretty good. That's three, three for three. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. Um, this movie has a lot of great um, bribery and crime. Um, tell me about the shadiest thing you've ever done that you can say on camera. You know what? Something that terrible that I did that still haunts me and, and is, and is uh, user-friendly. It's audience-friendly. I was in South by Southwest Film Festival in Austin years ago, uh, and they were still quite uptight, I believe, in Texas about marijuana smoking at that point. And I was smoking a joint walking down the street, uh, and it was sort of busy, like a bunch of bars and stuff, and it was maybe 10 o'clock at night, and the suit was really busy, and I saw these two policemen walking towards me, and this group of young hooligans came up, and were like, yo, can we hit that joint? And so I went, sure, and I just gave it to them and walked off, and, you know, as the police approached, that's <laughs> kind oh. of underhanded. <laughs> yeah, well, true story. Good times. Fun little anecdote. I'm clean as a whistle. Um, Guy is amazing. We have to we all know and love. Talk about working with him and how was that? It's frightening because, uh, well, from you know, film acting is quite frightening anyway. Uh, but if you have a director who might suddenly, having given you 40 pages of dialogue to learn in your late 50s, which is quite hard, uh, who might suddenly, in the middle of the day, say, we're going to change all that. Uh, here's, here's three new pages. That's alarming. It didn't take that very well. <laughs> or who might suddenly say, just when you think, I'm being rather good now. Yeah, yeah, your voice has gone up an octave. It sounds a bit girly now. And all the air goes out of you. Uh, and you go, well, how, how long have I been doing that for? I'm not sure, maybe about two days. <laughs> 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 Terrifying. Yeah. Similar notes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing is with Guy, he really will keep you on your toes. You know, he um, he's very unpredictable. He's pretty mercurial in his tastes. You know, so it can it can uh, it can flip and and move pretty rapidly. You know, it's it's quite exciting in a way. It it, it breaks one out of the habit of coming in with too rigid of an idea and just spending all one's time trying to execute it. You know, you have to be pretty fluid and athletic in the process working with Guy. But, you know, I found that uh, that can be really terrifying, but it can also bear delicious fruit. Um, you know, not always, but sometimes it can push you to, he can push you and the process at large can push you to unexpected and wonderful things. Amazing, well, I appreciate it. Just for the record, Just for the record. I don't think Hugh Grant is a cunt. Just to be oh. clear. The point was that he is not a cunt. Definitely not a cunt. So. Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Well, I didn't witness it. <laughs> very sweet. Thank uh, you. That's very sweet. <laughs> that's, that's male bonding right there. That is. That's good for us.